Hello, BookTube. Well, it's a bleak and barren Sunday. When there are no books in the mail for Steve, no free books at all. Uh, and as usual, I'm trying to console myself with a tag, and the tag I have today is extra consoling because it's, I was actually tagged in it instead of being ignored by everybody. <laughs> uh, it's the Olympics book tag. I was tagged by Jess at Rebel Reads. Thank you very much. And the tag was created by RJ at The Secret Stacks. Uh, who makes very interesting videos, except for the one that he, where he spends, I think it was an hour and 45 minutes, chastising me boneheadedly for opinions I don't hold and things I never said. But nobody's perfect, right? Uh, anyway, it's all uh, Olympic-themed questions, because that's all in the news today. Uh, uh, and question number one is the opening ceremony. What book has an incredible opening? Uh, and there are a lot of candidates here. Uh, there's Earthly Powers, which is a novel by Anthony Burgess, which has a great opening line uh, that's very intentionally great because the the main character is uh, a writer who prizes himself on great opening lines. Uh, there's Master and Commander, the first in Jack o in uh, Patrick O'Brien's Jack Aubrey and Stephen Maturin series in which our heroes meet at an outdoor concert in which Jack Aubrey is being a bit of a boob. <laughs> Uh, but the one I have in mind for today is this. It's uh, The Persian Boy by Mary Reynaud, which tells the story of a eunuch named Bagoas who eventually finds himself in the court and then the bed of Alexander the Great. Uh, and the first eight pages of the book uh, rather vigorously show us how he becomes a eunuch. <laughs> it's not flowery writing at all. Uh, question number two. Uh, the Games. What is your favorite fictional competition? Uh, and I have one in mind for this. It's an old book from 1982 that I imagine most of you have never heard of. Uh, if you see it, you know, used as a paperback, you should get it, because it's very good. It's Tom McNabb's book, Flanagan's Run. It tells the story of a Depression-era publicity stunt, a run across America from California to New York, 50 miles every day. Uh, for a grand prize of three hundred thousand dollars, so which, as the old joke goes, was real money back then. <laughs> uh, so a whole bunch of everybody in the world joins, not just professional runners, uh, and we our central cast of five characters has to tough it out. They have to deal with pain and new settings and affection and love, and it's just a marvelous story. The uh, the critic for the Cedar Rapids Gazette said that you should run, not walk, to the nearest bookstore for a copy. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see here. Uh, question number three. The original. The modern games are based on the Greek original. What is your favorite book based on a classic? And again, there are many, many candidates. Some of which I've mentioned on this channel before. There's, uh, uh, what have I got here? The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Uh, there's a novel called Alcestis by Catherine Butner that I really wish were better known. Uh, but the one I have in mind for today, believe it or not, is YA. It's a thing that I found while I was hunting around on some online bookstore. I don't even know what it was. Uh, it's this. It's Tracy Barrett, King of Ithaca. And it's the story of uh, Telemachus, the teenage dreamboat son of Ulysses, uh, Odysseus, who... Uh, has to live in Ithaca with his mother and all of her brutish suitors while their father, while his father is away, first at Troy and then trying to get back home. And it's really well done. I really enjoyed it. Uh, question number four, the eternal flame. What's one ship you won't let die, even though the book makes it clear it's never going to happen? Now you're probably expecting that I'm just going to spend this time ranting about such a high school question, but no, <laughs> I actually have one in mind. Uh, I'll be happy to play along on a bleak and barren Sunday. Uh, and it's from the Lord of the Rings. It's Aragorn and Eowyn, the shield maiden of Rohan. Of Rohan. Uh, it's clear when they meet and that there's feelings between them, but Aragorn is in love with and promised to Arwen, the daughter of the High Elf King Elrond. And I remember thinking, even the first time I read it, what? <laughs> it's, it's a class thing? She's she's It's an arranged marriage? And... This takes precedent over a, a fellow warrior, over someone that where there's a spark of chemistry. Uh, it's 
Tolkien tries to invest it with dramatic potential, Arwen is giving up her immortality in order to plight her troth with a mortal man. You'd be sure that Aragorn's going to hear about that over the breakfast table every day. <laughs> uh, but I never really got it. It seems very old world, very artificial to me. Uh, question number six, the controversial judge. Uh, what's a book you have a totally different opinion of than most people? <laughs> uh, there are quite a few candidates for this at all times. Uh, I sometimes think that, the, especially in the, in the professional critical world, I sometimes think that the professional critical world uh, is just a wee bit suggestible, <laughs> just a wee bit vulnerable to fad. Uh, and one of the most powerful fads in the last few years is multiculturalism, uh, where if your book under the title on the, on the first page says translated by, or if you you know, were uprooted by war, <laughs> you've got it made in the publishing circles of Manhattan, it seems like, sometimes. Uh, this explains, to the best of my knowledge, nothing else can explain the huge success of the successive line of slop buckets by Carl Ovin Osgard. What else could possibly explain it other than the new and the different? Uh, I, 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 one of those very critics, I was raving about City on Fire by Garth Risk Halberg and she said I don't understand you're saying it's good and I said yeah I think it's actually great and she said but he's white and male and American <sighs> it was a perfectly civil environment so I didn't tell her change your profession but I felt like it <laughs> uh, and this is an example of this season Home Going by Yag Yasi uh, a novel about Ghana that would have been totally ignored if it were the same kind of novel about Scranton, Pennsylvania. I found it completely flat. Uh, just a boring mechanical story, and yet it has elicited hosannas of unreserved praise from every corner of the critical world. Uh, so that would be one example. <laughs> I'm sure I could come up with many others. Uh, question number uh, six, gymnastics. What is a book you, that had so many twists and turns that it left your head spinning? Uh, ordinarily this is very rare to happen to me because authors are always, always less clever than they think they are. But in this particular instance, you've heard it praised on Booktube already, and not by me. Uh, it's uh, Arcadia by Ian Pears, which was the subject of Jen Campbell's great video about falling in love with a book, and which is a twisty, turny, amazingly accomplished thing. Even now, months and months after having read it, i still trying to unpack all the stuff that's in it and what's going on and where and why and how it affects everything else. It's, oh, I, I strongly recommend it. Uh, oh, where are we here? Question number seven. Uh, beach volleyball. Did not know that was an Olympic sport. Uh, what's your favorite fictional duo? Uh, and again, there are, as we've covered on this channel before, there are many candidates, but I have one in mind that doubles as a recommendation, and that is Jeeves and Worcester by P.G. Woodhouse. Uh, about Bertie Wooster and his indefatigable manservant Jeeves. Uh, if you haven't made the acquaintance of Jeeves and Wooster, you really should. <laughs> uh, uh, question number eight, weightlifting. What's the most massive book on your shelves? I should remind you, I've known two Olympians in my life, and one of them was a weightlifter. The other was a male gymnast. Uh, they're very nice people. Uh, but the most massive book is one I've mentioned on this channel before. It wins hands down. Uh, and it's this one, Reclaiming History by Vincent Pugliosi, which is 2,500 pages long. It's too big to carry. It's too big to fit in a bag. Uh, it's too heavy to put on a nightstand. It's too heavy to rest on yourself when you're reading it in bed at night. The only way that you can read it is to place it on a very square, a very solid four square wooden table and read it. I had read mine at the library. I read mine at the Boston Public Library, even though it wasn't a library book. Uh, which is a perfect example of the superiority of ebooks because they don't weigh anything. <laughs> uh, and I also highly recommend the book. I've mentioned it a couple of times before on this channel. I'm not sure that I've sung its praises. It's great. Uh, you just can't read it comfortably, that's all. Uh, question number nine Your favorite Olympic sport? A book you tore through at record speed. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned on this channel before, I don't. I have only one reading speed. It's pretty fast. I don't. It doesn't increase the more I'm interested in a book, or decrease the less I'm interested in a book. Uh, nothing about my reading 
is mood or whim driven. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do read books, some more eagerly than others, and this was one of them. Uh, Loner by Teddy Wayne, uh, whose book, The Love Song of Johnny Valentine, was so good. <laughs> a, an amazingly adept, sharp as a knife examination fiction form of the life of a non human creature like Justin Bieber. What would it be like to be a non human creature like Justin Bieber? Uh, and Loner is, is every bit as good and far more disturbing because its subject is not harmless. Its subject is that kid who maybe thinks too much, or maybe talks too much, the kid you worry about, the one you think might pop a stitch and take a whole bunch of people with him. It's a very good, very disturbing book. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, question number 10, Synchronized Swimming. A book series that kept you reading, even though you have no idea why. Oh, book two. Have I got an example for you today? Pretty sure I've never mentioned it on this channel before. Uh, <laughs> it's this. The Last Ranger by Craig Sargent. That is a burning RV behind our muscle-bound hero. <laughs> it's, it's a post-apocalyptic story in which a gorgeous himbo has nothing but his extensive military training... <laughs> his apparently endless arsenal of automatic weapons and a fierce pit bull named Excalibur to rely on against a world gone mad with cannibals and madmen and mutated animals. <laughs> it's just so awful. <laughs> it's book after book after book that every, every, you read one page and want to take a disinfectant shower. <laughs> the whole series is... Uh, out of print, I think, by federal order. <laughs> but if you ever see one, oh my. <laughs> you owe it to yourself to try one, <laughs> at least. I recommend The Madman's Mansion. <laughs> uh, question number 11. The Tortured Fan. What fictional family, group, nation, or organization do you irrationally root for, no matter how many times they break your heart? And the example that came to mind for me today is the Romulans from Star Trek. Who just can't catch a break. They're not as intimidating as the Klingons. They're not as entertaining as the Ferengi. They're not a uh, badass by any means. Their major technological innovation is a device for hiding. <laughs> uh, and then they're very origins derivative. They're just, you know, an offshoot of the Vulcans. <laughs> uh, I, and every time I see a Romulan-centered story or novel, I always hope it'll be good, and I'm always disappointed. <laughs> they're always dumb. <laughs> But I keep rooting, anyway. Uh, and the last question, at closing ceremony, what book had an ending that just blew your mind? Uh, and I have one in mind. It's uh, a little unconventional, but I, I imagine you'd expect that uh, by now. It's this. It's Paradiso by Dante. It's the third book in his Commedia. In the first one, he goes to hell. In the second one, he goes to purgatory. In the third one, he goes to heaven. And in heaven, not only consorts with his beloved Beatrice, but also witnesses God. Without any anthropomorphizing at all, it's the, the verses that where Dante tries to capture the experience of what it would be like to see God are some of the most surreal, mind-bending poetry that I've ever read in any language. I, I wholeheartedly recommend it, although most people don't get this far. They stop at the Inferno. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, and there you have it. That is the Olympics book tag, uh, which certainly did a bit to cheer me up on a bleak and barren Sunday. So thank you for tagging me, Jess. I'll see you all soon. Thank you, BookTube.